Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In this video, I'm going to be migrating my Zigbee network on my demo server from my Nortec Huzz BZB1 USB stick to my Home Assistant Connect ZBT1. This should hopefully be a reasonably quick video, but it is a necessary one. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos normally each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's affiliate links to smart home gadgets that you can buy for your own smart home and support the channel at the same time without it costing any extra, or you can support the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. Of course, those affiliate links and my Buy Me A Coffee link can all be found on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So in preparation for an upcoming video about merging my thread networks, I realized that in order to be able to both test the process and record a video of going through the process without winging it and maintain connectivity to my Zigbee devices on my demo server, it was going to be necessary to migrate my Zigbee network from the Nortec Huzz BZB stick in my demo server over to the Home Assistant SkyConnect USB stick or the Home Assistant Connect ZVT1. Now it's not technically required because I could actually run the Nortec stick as my Zigbee controller and then just run the Home Assistant ZVT1 purely as a thread border router. But we're going to migrate my Zigbee network over to the SkyConnect ZVT1 uh, and show you how that process works. Now, as I said at the top, this should hopefully be relatively quick. And it's not just useful for when you're migrating to a SkyConnect and you want the multi-protocol, but it could also be useful if your existing Zigbee bridge fails for whatever reason. Now, before we kick off, it's important that we take a backup of our Zigbee config. We should be taking regular backups anyway, but in this case, we can just take a backup of just the Zigbee config. To do that, over on Home Assistant, we'll head over to Settings and we'll go to Devices and Services and I'll grab my Zigbee Home Automation here. And if I click on Configure, I can click on Download Backup. And this is going to take a few seconds and it is going to then uh, download a file. And if I pop over here, we could see in my download, I have a JSON file of my ZHA config there. So I've taken that back up now and uh, it's good to have that just in case something goes wrong. Also, we're obviously going to need to have another Zigbee stick that we can migrate the radio to. And as I mentioned, we have the Home Assistant Connect ZBT1 plugged in to the server. I've already set that up and I've already confirmed that uh, Home Assistant can see that server is connected. Now, I will warn you that when we go through the migration process here, there is a good chance that at least some of our Zigbee accessories might break and you might need to repair to correct any issues. But for the most part, the only issues that I encountered were to do with the naming of individual sensors. But it's worth bearing in mind that your mileage may vary. Now, in preparation for this video, I reset the Zigbee setup on my demo server and I paired one button and one smart switch to ZHA just so that I can validate that everything is still connected after the migration. Uh, and just to point that out, if I head back out here, go to ZHA and go to three devices, we'll go to test button and I'll just press that a couple of times and you can see that that is firing. It's not being super responsive and part of that is because we're at the opposite end of the house from where the server is. Uh, but if I back out here and open up test plug, we should be able to turn the switch on here and that has worked and off and on. And I've just turned that off and it took a moment and it has gotten there now. And uh, it's going a little bit crazy at the moment and the cat is in the way. Whiskey, get out of the shot. So again, because of the distance from 
the Zigbee Bridge. Uh, I had a couple of uh, connection failures there. That's okay. I can live with that. Um, it's purely just uh, to illustrate that we should still have connectivity after we do this migration. So we should now be able to head back over to our settings, go to devices and services and Zigbee Home Automation again and click on configure. So at the moment you see Hub Z Smart Home Controller Zigbee COM port. If I hit configure, we should be able to click on migrate radio. ZHA will be stopped. Do you wish to continue? We'll submit that. And are you migrating to a new radio or reconfiguring the current radio? I'm going to migrate to a new radio. Before plugging in the new radio, your old radio needs to be reset. An automatic backup will be performed. So we didn't need to manually take that backup, but it's probably worth it anyway. If you're using a combined Z-Wave and Zigbee adapter, like the Hus BZB1, this will only reset the Zigbee portion. And if you're migrating from Conbi or Raspi to make sure that it's running firmware, uh, a minimum version of firmware uh, or higher, uh, and otherwise some devices may not be controllable after migrating until they're power cycled. Do you wish to continue? I'll click submit. And it says to unplug your old radio. It has been reset. If the hardware is no longer needed, you can now unplug it. I'll just leave that there. I'll click submit again. And now it's asking us to select the port that we want. And uh, we've got the Hub Z smart controller there, uh, but obviously we want the SkyConnect smart controller from Nabu Casa. So I'll click submit on that. And uh, network formation, choose the network settings for your radio. So we can either restore an automatic backup, upload a manual backup, or create a network. I'm going to restore an automatic backup and we'll take this one that was taken just moments ago. We'll click on submit there. And options successfully saved. So if I click finish now, and if I refresh this page, and now our radio type is uh, dev serial by ID USB Nabucasa Sky Connect. If I back out here, if I go to ZHA uh, and go to four devices, uh, it still shows my test button. What I might do now is I'll go and unplug the Hus BZB just so that we can verify that it is in fact working over the Sky Connect. So I'll be right back. So there is our Nortec Hus BZB stick uh, there next to the button and the switch. If I go to ZHA now and uh, we'll go into four devices and I'll go into test button and we will press that button and it's still connected. We got a short press event was fired, short press event was fired, um, double tap. Yep, so that is still working. And if I go into the test plug, this one is struggling a little bit. Okay, so it seems like the test plug is struggling to connect. What I'll do, I'll go plug it in a little closer to the server. I've just plugged that in uh, in the bathroom, which is around about halfway between the garage where the server is and where I'm sitting here in the dining room at the back of the house. We saw there that it became unavailable for a moment and then it changed uh, to the identify uh, and then it turned off and then it turned on and it turned off again. So we have control of that. And if I back out here and uh, go to Zigbee Home Automation, go to configure and then visualization, seems like we have a reasonable connection. And if I go back into ZHA, four devices into the test plug and go down. Yeah, so RSSI is about minus 55 dBm. It's not good, it's not bad, it's mediocre, I guess. Um, the device temperature is clearly not quite right at 0 0.3 degrees. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's warmer than that, uh, even in the bathroom where I've got it. Uh, but we have that connected. So we managed to not break our Zigbee home automation, but we've migrated it over to our Home Assistant uh, Sky Connect and the Puzz BZB uh, Zigbee and Z-Wave stick that we have here is now no longer required unless I were to get Z-Wave accessories. So with that, we've migrated our Zigbee network from the Nortec Hus BZB1 Zigbee USB stick over to our Home Assistant Connect ZBT1.
in a future video, we're going to be enabling the thread radio in the Home Assistant Connect ZBT1, which should then allow us to connect some of our matter over thread devices into Home Assistant as well, and possibly even some of our plain old thread devices, uh, if I configured that out as well, and that should give us responsive local control of those devices and also add the ability for us to then use Home Assistant to automate some of those thread and matter over thread devices as well. So that is migrating from the Nortec Huz BZB1 USB Zigbee controller to the Home Assistant Connect ZBT1. As you saw, it was fairly straightforward and we managed to maintain our existing Zigbee network without breaking anything. We didn't need to repair anything, but we certainly did lose a bit of connectivity there for a moment. But uh, I think you might have seen actually that we didn't have great connectivity to that Zigbee plug in the first place. So uh, I'm not too worried about the outcomes there. And in fact, I think uh, with where that Zigbee plug is now, it's probably in a better spot uh, to maintain a connection back to the Home Assistant Connect ZBT1. In this case, we didn't lose any of our device names, but I certainly did uh, when I did this in my production service. So bear that one in mind. It certainly wasn't ideal when that happened, uh, especially because I do have a lot of Zigbee entities, all my door and window sensors, etc., around the house uh, and temperature sensors. Uh, they're all Zigbee devices and uh, having lost all of those configs, I don't actually know which sensor is which, but I will be going through fixing those up. Once they're fixed up, it should all be fine. Now, as I say, I did complete this in my production environment already. And it did break some of my automations as well, but they mostly seemed to come good after rebooting my Home Assistant server as well. So just keep an eye out and look out for that trap uh, because I did go through redefining some of the triggers for some of my automations without a whole lot of luck before trying to restart the Home Assistant. So if you are running into any trouble after doing a migration like this, Start off with a reboot if you do run into that issue. As always, let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments section below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it's helped in your smart home and home automation journey. Be sure to drop a comment below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video and don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like and if you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to change that. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos, which is normally each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's a Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description. Any contribution you make through Buy Me A Coffee does get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Don't forget to check out my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.